you know, we do this every day with vaccines. Here's the evidence, here's the evidence, here's the evidence. But for somebody who isn't buying it to begin with, it's often not a knowledge-based issue. And we end up doing things that create emotions and resistance in people, and we wasted that encounter. And we maybe made things worse. So this is a way to do that differently, to recognize ambivalence. And these are the tools of motivational interviewing that we use. We use our ORs, right, our open-ended questions. We affirm. We reflect and we summarize. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time talking about open-ended questions. These are questions that can't be answered with one-word answers, right? Um, the point of these, however, is to invite sharing, right? If I want to see things from your perspective, it's hard to do that with a series of closed-ended questions. Um, we get to share the perspective of the patient or the person that we're talking to, and we get to share the agenda, which is hard. Right? How many of you like to let somebody else have control of the agenda for whatever? Right? It's hard. It's hard to do. And it's important to acknowledge that that can be hard to do. But what we're doing here with open-ended questions is we're listening to understand. We're not listening to provide a rebuttal. And that is really not natural for many of us. Right? I'm the expert. You're here. I'm the expert in healthcare. So I need to explain to you and educate you. So I'm going to listen to what you have to say, find the errors, and then correct you. That's what we do. That's what we're trained to do. But MI says, if we're dealing with ambivalence, that is not helpful. If you think about ambivalence as feelings on one side and the other, if you think about like a teeter-totter or a, I, that's what I called it. I don't know what it is. But if we have, if people have any level of ambivalence and we jump on the side of change, what does that leave for them? Right, reasons to not do what we want. So we have to be able to say, I see, period, versus yes, but that's what we want to do and we need to, to, to try to not do that. We have to affirm, right? Even our patients who are dead set or verbally saying that they're dead set against doing what we want them to do, we have to be able to acknowledge strengths and positives, right? For whatever reason, they do care about their health in one domain or another, or they're engaging in a conversation with us, all of this indicates there's some level of valuing their health or so on. We have to be able to recognize and affirm strengths. You know, you're a dedicated advocate, or this is something you've put a lot of thought into. You've worked hard to get where you are. These are things that are important. Making them be truthful is also important. A big part of motivational interviewing is being genuine. We don't want to make things up. Reflections. This is important. Reflective listening, being able to tell people what you hear them saying is important. Um, it takes a little practice, I think, to get natural. Um, this is something to, if somebody says something to you, you tell them back what you heard them say. You can use their exact words. You can summarize. The more you practice it, the more you're able to reflect back the unspoken things, right? So if someone is telling me really in a loud voice, with a lot of gesturing why they're not gonna do this thing their doctor keeps telling them to do, I can reflect back, this is, this is a really big, de really big deal to you. You're, you feel very passionately about this, right? Those aren't the words that they said, but that's what I was, felt was communicated to me. The reason this is important is this is how you develop that collaboration. This is genuine understanding, standing next to the person and seeing things the way that they do and letting them know that you see it the way that they do. It doesn't mean you agree. Nothing about reflections means that you have to be in agreement, right? It just means I understand. And it lets people correct you. Every so often I'll offer a reflection and be told, no, nope, that's not what I mean. And then they move on and tell you, and that's great. Now we're being efficient and we're moving forward. Um, you can start by practicing with it sounds like, right? That's an easy way to get going with it. Or to say things more directly about what you're hearing is helpful as well. Okay. Summaries are just extended reflections. You can extend, you can reflect a whole bunch of what was talked about here or what's been worked on historically in multiple encounters and so on, or moving on to a new topic.